Chapter 2 In their minds, Sophie and Zack were bolting towards the door to escape, leaping through the open gym window, hopping onto their bikes and racing away. Unfortunately for them, they were frozen still as they gazed at a ghoulish Miss Lippenstein with razor blade like fingernails, a long pointed nose, and a pair of sinister eyes that made the hair on the back of their neck stand. Sophie hid her eyes as best as she could behind Zack, gripping his shoulders tight, unable to fully take her eyes off of Mrs. Lippenstein's appearance. What are we going to do? She asked worriedly. I don't know. I'm thinking of a plan. Zack replied. Could you think a little faster? Zack looked around for anything he may be able to use. Nothing was within an arm's reach. He began to panic. Zack tried to hide it best he could as not to worry Sophie, but she could see he was trembling as much as she was. Just as he started to lose hope, his eyes wandered frantically from desperation to find a way to escape. That's when it dawned on him. A reflection! Zack uttered to himself, noticing his reflection from the glass doors in the front of the school. What? Sophie asked. A ghost reflection. It's their kryptonite. Sophie was still confused by his logic. What? Just trust me. You don't make it easy. Zack had managed to gain some feeling in his legs. He started to make his way back towards the doors, trying to bait Mrs. Lippenstein to follow. Naughty, naughty children. Mrs. Lippenstein slithered, clawing her bony fingers towards our heroes. Don't you worry. There's plenty to do in detention. Now! Zack shouted, moving to the side, pulling Sophie down with him. As Zack and Sophie fell to the floor, the light cast from the moonlight beamed through the glass doors like a laser pinpointing its target, highlighting the ghoul's reflection, causing her to be mortified by what she saw. Twisting and turning in pain, her skin dissipating into the air like she was made of ash burning off from a fire. As Mrs. Lippenstein disappeared, Zack and Sophie pulled themselves up and ran towards the gym. Come back here! Come back! Mrs. Lippenstein cried out malevolently. Zack and Sophie had already made their way through the open window in which they had come, jumping down from the ledge and hopping onto their bikes speeding away as fast as they could. As the two headed home, they could still hear the wailing of Mrs. Lippenstein coming from the school halls the next street over. Moments later, the night had become colder, with a wind chill so thin it could cut through glass. The moon was full, brightly lighting the slick streets of Middleton. Zack was pedaling harder and harder, breathing heavily like he was in a race for his life. Sophie was just inches on his tail. He turned around to see if anyone, or anything, was following behind. Wait! He shouted. Sophie slammed on her brakes right behind him, settling on the tips of her toes, barely keeping still, ready to take off again at a moment's notice. What? Let's keep going. Hold on. Look. Zack pointed out. Sophie turned her head. Look at what? Exactly. We're free. For now? No. Think about it. What do we know about ghosts? That they're creepy as hell? Well, yeah. What else? I don't know. Ghosts can only haunt. Instantly, it had occurred to Sophie. They can only haunt the place they died. Exactly. 
Zack replied. But what about tomorrow? During lab? <sighs> We're sitting ducks. Not necessarily. If there's one thing I know, it's ghosts can't haunt during the day. Where'd you learn that? PBS? Think about it. If ghosts could scare whenever they want, wouldn't it make more sense to scare us during the day when we're around? Mm, I guess. Totally. Besides, when you're dead, your skin is like see-through so the sunlight burns. That's vampires. You sure? Sophie nodded her head. Pretty sure. While Zack pondered that, Sophie looked down at her wristwatch to check the time. Oh, shoot. I was supposed to be home two hours ago. Oh, man. I'm so dead. Don't sweat it. Our parents will never find out. The next morning at Zack's house... Grounded? Zack asked, confused. But that's so not fair! I'll tell you what's not fair. Checking on you in the middle of the night, discovering you're missing. His father replied, angrily. His arms folded, sternly leaning up against the kitchen counter. Do you know how worried we were? You could have been seriously hurt. How'd you get in? You think I don't have a key to every room in this house, kiddo? That's so uncool! That's my room! This is my house. Our house, dear. His mother corrected. Yes, our house. His father gladly replied. His mother smirked at his father, and then leaned in for a kiss. Your father's right. What you did is unacceptable and dangerous. His mother chimed in. Kids your age shouldn't be out at all hours of the night. There's so many weirdos out there. Duh. Zack mimicked. What was that? His mother barked standing upright with a fist resting on her right hip. Uh, nothing, Mom. I love you. Uh-huh. You're grounded for a week. End of discussion. His father announced. But nothing happened! You're missing the point, Zachary. You kids could have gotten seriously hurt. His mother said. The tension was thick. Zack looked on as both his parents glared at him with disappointment in their eyes. Zack knew that this conversation wasn't going anywhere. He decided instead to go to his room. Come on, Mills. Zack called to Millie, tapping his hip for her to follow him. Zack and Millie headed upstairs to Zack's room. As you can imagine, he was frustrated. He grabbed a comic book and fell to his bed, flat on his stomach, kicking his sneakers off onto the floor. Zack vigorously flipped through the pages. He'd read this comic ten times over. He couldn't clear his thoughts. He kept replaying the events from the other night. Realizing the comic was no use, he tossed it to the side, hopped off his bed, and shuffled over to his computer. While booting the dial-up internet, he had forgotten to turn his speaker down. Grounded means no internet either, Zachary, his father called out. Zach rolled his eyes. And don't roll those eyes at me. Oh, I hate it when he does that, Zach said. Since Zack could remember, he could never get away with anything. He was convinced his parents had eyes in the back of their heads. No matter what, no matter where, if he did something wrong, they knew about it. 
The next day at school, Sophie was grabbing her books from her locker for the next class. She seemed to be a little on edge. When she closed her locker door, Zach was standing there, angelic-like, behind it. Sophie scoffed at him and then stormed off. Zach followed after. Whoa, what's wrong? Zach asked. You and me for listening to your stupid plan. Sophie angrily replied, not stopping for a second. Zach hustled to catch up to her. What are you talking about? Sophie stopped. My parents grounded me for two weeks thanks to you. Sophie stormed off again. Zach was utterly confused, chasing down Sophie. How is that my fault you got caught? Sophie stopped to make her point again. No, you got caught, and then your parents called my parents, hence why I'm grounded. Zach felt terrible. Soph, I'm really sorry. I know... The school bell rang loudly, interrupting Zach's apology. Sophie looked around as everyone in the halls grabbed what they needed and started rushing off to their classes. She knew Zach was genuinely sorry, but she was too mad to hear it. Look, we got lucky the other night. Let's just count our lucky charms and move on. Wait, are you saying forget the other night? I'm saying... Sophie trailed off as she was walking away. I'm saying... We move on. Zach overanalyzed every little detail. Judging by the tone of her voice and the look on her face, she was hurt. Not like a little bit, and they'll hang out later. She was mad. Like she'd kick you out of the fan club mad. When Zach arrived back home later on, he was oozing with anger. He blew through the front door, tossed his backpack on the floor, and stood in front of the television where his parents and Millie were. I can't believe you guys! Watch your tone, his father shot back. You guys tattled to Sophie's parents, and now my best friend is mad at me. They had every right to know that their daughter sneaks out at night. It was one time. I can't believe you guys. Zach stormed off pouting, heading up the stairs. Zach's parents followed behind him. Zachary? His mother yelled. Zach recognized that sound. He knew she was serious. That ghoul wasn't the only thing that could stop him where he stands. I understand you're angry, but make no mistake, we do these things for your own good. And to teach you about being responsible, his father informed. What you did the other night, what you both did the other night, is dangerous. You could have gotten hurt. But we didn't. One day, when we're not around, you'll understand, his mother said. That day can't come soon enough. Zack replied hostile, stomping his feet the rest of the way to his room, slamming his door shut. The next morning, Zack struggled to open his eyes. His eyelids felt like large weights were sitting on them. He mustered up just enough strength to sit upright in bed. He arched his back, stretching his arms high in the sky, letting out an exhausted yawn. <sighs> it took him a second to realize that something was different. 
He couldn't quite put his finger on it, but he knew something was off. His vision seemed hazy. Zack rose to his feet, looked around his room. Millie? He called out. Millie! Looking around his room. Huh. Zack thought nothing of it. Maybe she decided to stay downstairs and wait for him. That was a minimal thought that had crossed his mind. As Zack made his way to the bathroom, he merely took notice of something else. He stuck his nose in the air and sniffed around. <laughs> Expecting, of course, to see his mom, his dad, and Millie all huddled around the kitchen table. Mom cooking up a tasty breakfast and dad sipping his coffee with the newspaper in hand. <laughs> to his shock, the kitchen was a ghost town. Hello? Zack called out, peeking his head around every corner, expecting to catch a glimpse of life in the house. But again, no one answered. Okay, something is definitely off. That was all Zack could say to convince himself that things weren't as bad as he would truly come to find out. After all the weirdness, Zack hurried up the stairs to throw on some clothes, grab his helmet, head back downstairs and skate his way to school. There he would meet up with Sophie and explain to her all the weirdness that happened this morning. As Zack skated through town, the weirdness at his house seemed like a dream vacation. The entire town was deserted, not a soul in sight. This had reminded Zack of a dream he once had when he was younger, but instead of the town being deserted, it was overtaken by giant Eskimo pies. This was much worse. And it would only get weirder when he arrived to school. As Zack arrived to school, it appeared that things there hadn't been any better. No one was around. Cars were abandoned in the middle of the crosswalks and the street. Doors flung open and materials left inside. Zack began to feel like he was in an episode of a series where a group of kids tell campfire stories. Where is everybody? He thought to himself. The wind was rough but fair, and the sky had a fallen orange-gray, like something out of a wasteland film. The school bell rang through the entire town. It didn't sound the same. It had a different tone, a harsher delivery. It made Zack's ears buzz. Zack entered the school with caution. He could hear the faint sound of kids walking and talking in the halls as if they were there, but no one was around. Hello? Zack called out, his pleading echoing through the halls, twisting and turning, hoping to find somebody. The lockers began to bang, opening and shutting viciously on their own. Zack couldn't understand it. He thought to himself, How was this happening? Suddenly, all the classroom doors slammed shut. The immediate feeling of loneliness had made itself known. Zack noticed a sign up ahead taped to the gym doors that read, Detention. Curious to say the least, Zack couldn't resist but to check it out. When he opened the gym doors, he shrieked in terror like something out of a horror movie. There was everyone from town, including his mom and dad, parked in the two closest seats, Sophie in the next, followed by Millie lying on the ground. This made no sense to Zack. What? What the? 
A ruler struck down on a chalkboard placed in front of everyone with such brute force to interrupt his question, causing even Zack to cringe in horror. That is enough of you, young man. A stern voice called out. It was Mrs. Lippenstein from the other night. Except, she wasn't all ghost-like and gross. Now, take your seat. Or do I have to write you a detention slip? Zack was in utter shock. He whispered to his parents, hopeful to break them of the trance. Mom. It was no use. They didn't even acknowledge him. Sitting there stiff as a board, facing straight ahead. He called out to Sophie and Millie as well. Not even Millie could notice him. Sit down, Mr. Nelson. Mrs. Lippenstein demanded, signaling a seat out of the blue, sliding behind him, tripping him, making him sit promptly down in front of her. Zack wiggled to try and free himself. It was no use. He appeared to be held from some sort of magic. Mrs. Lippenstein approached him, moving across the floor, bending her figure as though she was made of paper. Her neck bent to the side, her knees popped out like she was walking on the tips of her toes. Maybe now you'll learn some respect. Zack continued to try and wiggle his way out. Mom! Dad! Wake up! His father turned his neck in his direction slowly like an owl, the rest of his body still facing forward. Zachary, you've been a naughty boy. Mrs. Lippenstein is here to help you. The words spoken couldn't have sent bigger chills down Zack's spine. His mom followed soon after. Zachary, behave, or you'll have to be punished. Zack's eyes lit up, bulging from his sockets. No, no, no. Mrs. Lippenstein inched her way closer and closer to Zack. She extended her pinky finger near his eyeball, almost scratching the surface. Zack closed his eyes shut, squeezing them as tight as he could. Don't worry, Zack. It'll all be over soon. Sophie assured him, sounding like she was a puppet in someone's show. I've got you now. Mrs. Lippenstein cackled, hurling herself into a sinister laugh. No! Hey everybody, this is Griffin O'Connor, creator and narrator of Zack vs. the Paranormal. You were just listening to Chapter 2. I hope that didn't leave you on too much of a cliffhanger. Um, I want to just thank you guys for showing the first episode so much love and so much support. Uh, I can't believe just how well you guys responded. I just want to say that if you guys haven't by now, make sure you click subscribe and let me know how much you're really liking this. Um, it's possible that this might have to get its own channel. Who knows? It seems to be doing, you know, really, really popular amongst the younger, uh, younger demographic. So we'll see. Um, but uh, yeah, that is our show for tonight. Make sure you stay tuned for next Wednesday, 8 p.m., same Zach time, same Zach channel.